right so let's uh, respect the buddha before we get started sadhu 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 namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse uh, good evening dhamma friends uh, do we have newcomers i saw one Oh, there are three newcomers. Do you have a plan to catch up with our previous lessons? <laughs> uh, we have notes, actually, for many lessons, especially the very needy ones. If you can go back here, today is day 11. Uh, we have notes except for the first day. That means uh, 10 notes, including today. I think it's good to... Uh, review those notes so you can catch up with the uh, previous lessons and i wanted to say that uh, you might have perhaps seen uh, there is a review uh, uh, by the end of this month there's a slight misunderstanding that it is not the review of the sutta we can't uh, uh, finish the sutta it is a review of the noble eightfold path because I'm leaving on November, uh, this month, uh, 29th of this month, uh, to Sri Lanka. I, I've been discussing to do it online. Uh, you know, otherwise, uh, we're kind of like breaking up <laughs> uh, the class. So, um, it is not a review of the whole sutta. Uh, by, that, uh, by that day, I mean the review day, what we are going to do is reviewing the eight uh, path factors. Uh, we have to do a lot. We haven't done uh, Dukkha Arya Satcha, Dukkha Samudhi Arya Satcha, Dukkha Nirodha Arya Satcha. This is only the Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Patipada Arya Satcha. And we have to discuss, discuss what is Tiparivatta, what is Dwada Sakar, and how the cry went up to different heavens, and Brahma worlds, and Sotapati. That is where we are going to finish the Sutta. Alright? That's the plan. Uh, the Vihara will inform you officially, but just to let you know, so you know the plan. Today we will be discussing about one of the very more one of the very important topics in today's world. What is it? Samma Sati. So mindfulness is not our topic today. Our topic is right mindfulness. Right? Mindfulness is everywhere, but right mindfulness is hardly anywhere. Now you understand there are some uh, particular areas that you may need to understand. The first thing that I want uh, you to think about is that mindfulness, this uh, word and then the whole bunch of conversations that have been going for many, many decades uh, uh, come from a uh, minimalistic approach to uh, become a better person. Uh, I would say uh, becoming a non-judgmental person. This idea of becoming a non-judgmental person, right? So this is uh, this is a minimalist approach to right mindfulness. Right mindfulness is a very structured practice. I will tell you why. Let me read this. Becoming a non-judgmental observer. This is what the Western mindfulness talks about. Right? You've got to be non-judgmental. Uh, and then uh, you're going to be fully aware of the present moment. Being non-judgmental and being fully aware of the present moment. And then you spend your time. And practicing the four parts of mindfulness, I would say, right mindfulness, just to the extent necessary for the overcoming of covetousness and grief for the world. Now, this is the right mindfulness. So, becoming a non-judgmental observer while being fully aware of the present moment is the Western uh, mindfulness. But practicing the four satipatthanas, four parts of uh, right mindfulness is 
what we call by Samma Sati. Okay. There's a clear difference. That means basically overcoming greed and hatred. What is the basic main purpose of right mindfulness? How do we understand this thing? Atapi sampajano satima vineya loke abhijjhado manasa. Katame chattaru idha bhikkave bhikkhu kaya kaya anupasi viharati. Each satipattana presents this part. Atapi sampajano satima, three aspects. Vineya loke abhijjhado manasa. This phrase keeps appearing. After all Satipatthana uh, introductions, that makes right mindfulness very unique, different from the Western, I would say, just mere mindfulness. Now, before this, let me ask you something. Now, let's go back to our previous week, last week. What did we discuss uh, last week? Some of you were not uh, present. We discussed about Samma Vayamo. What is Samma Vayamo? Let me do a kind of a quick review. A review should come from you. <laughs> what is Samma Vayamo? Huh? There are four parts of the right effort. Samma Vayamo. Samma Vayamo means without right effort, we cannot practice anything. Right? You have no energy, no effort. And I introduce right effort in four ways. The first one was preventing inactive akusala states. So bringing your right effort to prevent inactive akusala states of your mind. Second, unfortunately now akusalas have come to you. Then removing the active akusala states of the mind. They are already with you. The third one, creating inactive kusala states of the mind. They are not with you, but you are trying to create. Then, maintaining, deepening, sustaining the active kusala states of the mind. This is Samma Vaya. Now, when you are doing that well, then you are going on to, then you are well prepared to go into Samma Sati. Now, this aspect is missing in the Western mindfulness. They are not talking about kusala kusala perspective. They just sit down and they are not trying to be uh, judgmental about anything and they are fully aware of the moment. What price of that in Buddhist teaching? It is good for them, you know. But for us, it is not what we understand by right mindfulness. It is mindfulness. From today, when you discuss this topic with anybody, mindfulness is one thing, right mindfulness is another thing. They are two different things. Uh, if somebody is trying to incorporate both of them as synonymous, it is not going to work. Because here, the opposite part of right mindfulness is wrong mindfulness, micha sati. Micha sati means mere mindfulness. Uh, mere mindfulness uh, is been maintained by many intelligence drug cartels criminals spy uh, people they are practicing right uh, law enforcement right they have good good mindfulness and bad mindfulness right their surveillance goes well sometimes not working so right mindfulness based on kusala perspective you can't hurt anybody you can't do any akusalas with that right mindfulness. It is basically uh, rooted in kusala. So when you have Samma Vayamo, you are, as I told you, you are very much into uh, Samma Sati. It is very easy for you to then at that point come down to the Samma Vayamo. Now I wanted to mention once again, I think you know that, Every noble path factor must be practiced by another three noble path factors. What are they? Right view, right effort, right mindfulness. Where is it mentioned? Where is this teaching mentioned? 
Does Dhammachakapatana Sutta mention about this? Huh? Does the Dhammachakapatana Sutta say when you practice these eight noble path factors, you must practice along with the three supportive noble path factors? Does it say so? Huh? Yes or no? Looks like you haven't read it. <laughs> you just listen into the monks. Ah, Dhamma Chaka Pasut. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blessed now. <laughs> right? The Sutta does not mention anything about it. Then Satcha Vibhanga Sutta, the second Sutta which the Arhan Sariputta uh, gave about the Dhamma Chaka Pasut Sutta summary, it doesn't mention too. Go down here. Ah. Ah. It has not given here, right? Maha hmm. Chatta Arisaka Sutta is the Sutta which says that this practice should be practiced along with other three path factors. That means uh, whenever you see this precious teaching in the Buddhist text, it is not always inclusively discussed. That's why I always say do not just read suttas online without proper consultation. You don't know. You should read, you should learn under a good teacher. Maybe a lay person, maybe a monk. Because they have expertise. Otherwise you have read something, you think that is correct. It's a serious misunderstanding. Now, let's go to the basic information. Now, where do we find uh, Maha Chatta Arisaka. Let me type that for you again. Yeah, this one. Maha Chatta Arisaka Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 117. This is where we understand a very critical analysis of the Noble Eightfold Path. Majjhima Nikaya 117. Right. Now, we understand when we are going to practice Samma Sati for the first time, we have to pass through a lot of other stages of our path. What are they? Samma Aditi, Samma Sankapa, Samma Vacha, Samma Kamanta, Samma Ajiva, Samma Vayam. Why it takes six uh, noble path factors to get here? Why can't you jump into this practice right away? Is it, is it not possible to jump into this practice? Like how many teachers teach you, are you practice satipatthanas, you know, it's okay. Is it easy? I mean, what is going on? They strip out, they trim down this part, take out, like the yoga in the West, other places, it's not the real yoga like India, and they show you, ah, this is yoga, you know. It's not the yoga, the real yoga. They strip out the whatever the marketing part, whatever the interesting part for them, and then show, exhibit, display, market that part. So we can't trim only this section and then tell that we can do it as a stand-alone practice. It's a serious mistake too. That is why I was trying to tell you since the beginning, the starting point is Sammadit. Samma Sankap after. They are parts of the elementary level of your Panya. I said Panya, Sila, Samadhi, Panya again. And then you go down to the Sila part. Without Sila, you are not having a good support for your this Samadhi practice. Right? Because let's say you are going to meditate tonight. Let's say you were very bad today. You lied to somebody, you cheated on of course not. <laughs> and then you did something wrong. These things keep coming onto your mind. Because we have to be honest to us in our practice. That is why the Buddha said that uh, sila is very important, highly important. But not too much sila, not extreme sila. Some level of sila is very necessary. And then vayamo part. Then you are here with the sati. You can't take it out and practice separately. It is a combined integrated practice along with all these uh, you know, primary factors. 
we have two sutras where we understand satipattanas why do i say satipattana because it says under the uh, what do you call satcha vibhanga sutta samma uh, sati is for satipattanas if you go down to satcha vibhanga sutta let's see that because dhamma chakapatana sutta does not mention what is samma sati it simply says samma sati samma samadhi so we have to go to satcha vibhanga sutta majjhima nikaya 141 katama chausu samma vayamwa katama chausu samma sati idha usu bikkave kaye kayana passe viharati yata api sampajano sati ma vini loki api chadu manasang so and so forth ah samma sati the the proper definition of all these noble path factors uh, was primarily introduced by arhan sariput uh, in the satcha vibhanga sutta but the analysis was given in the critical one was given in the mahachattar sutta the simple introduction was given in the Dhamma Chakapatan Sutta. Right? Okay, now let's understand from here. Kaya Kaya Anupasi, now we know Kaya Anupasana, Vidana Anupasana, Chitta Anupasana, Dhamma. They are very famous aspects of Satipattana. First, let's discuss about Satipattana. There are two suttas that go uh, that go by the name of Satipattana. Majjhimanikaya ten Satipattana sutta. The longer version is given in the Diganikaya Mahasatipattana sutta. Uh, reading the uh, shorter version is enough because it has everything. Uh, the difference between uh, uh, Mahasatipattana sutta and Satipattana sutta is that the Dhammanupasana part has been more detailed in the Diganikaya's one, but it's the same. Okay, first let's discuss about the word Satipattana. Satipattana. How do we understand this word? Now there are two, I would say, um, there are two ways to understand this Pali word. Sati, Pattana or Sati Upattana. Anybody is familiar these two ways? Sati Pattana. Now, Pattana, no, it, it comes up with the English translation. Pattana means establishing. Establish. Uh, you have another Pattana, Abhidhamma Pitaka. Pattana Pakarana, right? Abhidhamma has seven books. One is Pattana Pakarana. It's the largest Abhidhamma book. <laughs> Last Abhidhamma book. All the information. Uh, so, Pattana means establishing right mindfulness. Establish. Upattana means placing, placing near. That means placing Sati near somewhere. I mean, that means we are going to place Sati near our actions. Near my thinking, near my other activities and all that. Uh, scholars agree that Sati Upattana is what we find out in many uh, contexts in the Sutta Pitaka. That means actually we have to bring Sati to all our activities. Right? If we simply understand it, now let's say somebody is going to sit down here on the floor telling all of us that I am going to meditate now. But he or she is going to sit down into a moment where Loba Dosa Moha are highly withdrawn. There is, not, there is no Loba Dosa Moha that person will have to encounter a lot because comfort zone and no distractions and he or she knows what he she's going to do. But where are our Loba Dosa Moha perpetually arising? They are perpetually arising in our normal life. If you confine Satipattana uh, you know, teaching only to a sitting practice, then Satipattana practice is going to be a very liminal, very uh, limited practice, which is not. Satipattana is an all-pervading practice. Right? It is the practice where you are going to take care of your thoughts, troubling thoughts, Usually, 
perpetually come up when you are not in the comfort zone, right? For the spirituality. At home, outside, that is where you are going to uh, face with lot of challenges. So Satipatthana practice cannot be limited to a certain small practice. You will practice something over there. It has to go to your daily life. That is how we understand the meaning of Upattana. So that means you have to bring, you have to place my, uh, right mindfulness uh, with all your other activities, while you are talking, while you are doing any other activity. So I think Sati Upattana makes sense as scholars suggest because you are placing right mindfulness with whatever other uh, activities that you are engaged with. Now let's discuss about Sati. Can we give a meaning to the Pali word called Sati without the context? Now a lot of people are going to translate what is Sati. Can we, according to this context, as I mentioned to you earlier, can we give a standalone meaning to this word? We cannot. Why? Sati plays different context in the canon. Sati could be memory, right? Now there's a word called Sati Manta. Uh, Sati Ma. There's a lady in the canon, right? Sati Manta, which means Someone who can memorize everything. Who is that? Huh? Bhante Anand. He can memorize. He can uh, tell anything by memory. But did it help him to become an Arahant? Memory doesn't help a lot. Although you know everything. Although you carry everything here. Like a pen drive. It doesn't help you. Till you bring that practice Bring that knowledge as a practice, right? Whatever the food you are having, but you are living with the food that are being properly digested. Other food is not going to work for you, right? The same way, although you quantify, you quantify Dhamma knowledge, it doesn't help a lot rather than you qualify Dhamma knowledge as an application. So it didn't help Bhante Ananda. But he carried a lot of things. It, it was good in a way. Sati has then memory. Then Sati has different other connotations, other meanings too. So without knowing the specific context, we cannot say what Sati is. Sati is not basically mindfulness in that context. Now see the uh, stock phrase in the Satipatthana Sutta. What does it say? Ekayeno ayang bikkave maggu sattanang visuddhya sokapari devanang samatikkamaya dukkha domanassanang athangamaya nyayasa adigamaya nibbanasa satchikriya yadidang chattaru satipattana. Now satipattanas were introduced this way. How it was given? This is the direct path for the purification of beings. Direct path. For the surmounting of sorrow. Soka, Parideva lamentation. Dukkha domanasananga thangamaya for the uh, disappearance of dukkha and uh, domanasa discontent. Nyayasa adigamaya for acquiring the true method. Nibbanasa satchikriyaya for the realization of nibbana. It has been highly given in high regard. But this has a fundamental issue. Why is it? Why is it? Now we know Noble Eightfold Path is the direct path. Satipatthana practice is only a component of that practice. Satipatthana practice is a part of that Noble practice. So uh, uh, we never know how it happened here. Probably these suttas have been uh, maintained by many Sangha over many centuries. Uh, anyways, we understand uh, this is a part of the Noble Eightfold Path. So then you can't say uh, this is the only path, direct path. Direct path, only path, greatest path is the Noble Eightfold Path. Now a lot of people who don't know this, they take it as a direct path. They're going to teach their way. <laughs> Satipatthana is the only path 
grip path. And they don't know what it is. They, they haven't read about other suttas actually. Right? Anyways, the rest of the thing is clear. They are making sense. And let's keep going. Okay, what are the other contexts of Sati? Sati is a bojang, a noble path factor. It is a bala power, spiritual power. It's a spiritual faculty. Right? Sadda, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. There are five uh, power, spiritual powers and five spiritual faculties. So that means Sati is not only uh, what you call by the right mindfulness. It goes beyond. Now you might think, what is Mitcha Sati again? Now if the four Satipatthanas are right mindfulness, then what would be the wrong mindfulness? Now if mindfulness is good, how come there is a wrong mindfulness? Right? If, if mindfulness is such good, how come Buddha categorizes there is a wrong mindfulness? That means some people practice it in a wrong way. Then what could be the wrong mindfulness? Huh? Judgmental? I think, I think when you want mindfulness, you are not judging anything, right? I think that's pretty normal, right? You know, I think nobody's going to ju judge, even in the wrong mindfulness. What's the problem here? If any, uh, if any mindfulness practice is devoid of, absent from what you call not removing abhijja domanasa in the world, that is mitcha sati. Let's go back here. As you can see here, kaya kaya anupasi viharati, vedanasu vedana anupasi viharati. Chitte chitta anupasse viharati, dhamme dhamma anupasse viharati, ata api sampajano satima vinayi loki apicha. And this part is missing in the mindfulness, just mere mindfulness practice. What is it? Just to the extent necessary for overcoming covetousness and sorrow, or covetousness uh, and grief in regard to the world. Is this part in the general mindfulness? Do they say that to you? Do they tell you that when you practice mindfulness meditation, you must overcome your abhijja and then the openness in regard to the world? Do they say that? They never say that. That is wrong mindfulness then. Right? No, no. So today you knew what is wrong mindfulness and what is right mindfulness. Atapi. Sampajano Satima. We have to clearly understand these three words. And Vinaya Loke Abhicha Dhumanasa. For that, I have a note down over there. Ah, see. The practice of Satipatthanas, or I would say Samma Sati, is a very challenging practice to many people because of a reason. It is not about the individual parts of the Satipatthanas. It is not that they don't know about the first Satipatthana, not that the second Satipatthana, or the third fourth. It is that they do not know the methodology of the practice. And now we're going to be talking the methodology. How can the four Satipatthanas, right mindfulness, be practiced and work? You know what, uh, what are the contents of Satipatthana? But now I'm going to teach you the issue. They have a huge misunderstanding, not misunderstanding, probably they don't know about uh, this methodology. Prior to learning the specific exercises, I, I would call all these exercises under Kayanapasana, Vedana, Chitta, Dhamma, there are 23. Prior to learning them, it is necessary to understand how each exercise should be practiced. The methodology involves two aspects to which one must pay close attention and exert effort while practicing. Uh, this is the first one. The second one goes down here. All right, this is very important. First one, atapi sampajano satima vinaya loki apichatuma. That means in each whatever the satipatthanas you're gonna practice, which is very friendly with you, you must practice that particular satipatthana exercise through these four. Let's understand what they are. Atapi, you see here. 
ఆతాపి సంపజాను సతిమా వినయ లోకి అభిజా దోమ ఆతాపి వాట్ ఇస్ ఆతాపి మీ డిలి డిలిజెంట్ డిలిజెంట్ దట్ మీన్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ సార్ట్ ఆఫ్ అప్పమాద్ డిలిజెంట్ డిలిజెన్స్ అట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ ఆర్డెంట్ వే ఆర్ యూ ఆర్డెంట్ యాక్ట్ యు ఆర్ ఆర్డెంట్ అబౌట్ యూ కుశల ప్రాక్టీస్ ఆ కుశల ప్రాక్టీస్ దిస్ మీన్స్ రైట్ ఎఫర్ట్ నథింగ్ అదర్ దాన్ దాట్ you know what i'm going to show you here is that these three words clearly say the three supportive factors atapi is sammavayam sampajana is right view sammaditti satima is right mindfulness this is what we have to understand those three noble path factors that are supportive to all the other noble path factors play the role it is clearly given okay see atapi means you have lots of right effort in terms of those four aspects what are they prevention of akusala states removing of your akusala states creating new kusalas and then maintaining your kusala state and this is what we understand by atapi have you ever incorporated this into your right mindfulness practice not near anywhere <laughs> not near anywhere i hope in the foreseeable future you're going to incorporate atap right effort sampajano this is an interesting word sampajano pajano pajanati the word is pajanati we have another word called pajanati pajanati mean pajanati you can search if you want some part dictionaries are coming up ah uh, pajanati ah uh, knows clearly knows clearly right let's search like that you see pajanati panya is the verb stem and knows clearly so clear knowing but here there is another word sampajano sampajanati not even you clearly know you clearly know fully some means in a good way wholesome way right that means how do how can you do that how will you be given that uh, skill true samaditi otherwise you can't do that how do you separate out uh, wrong mindfulness from uh, right mindfulness how do you distinguish right mindfulness from wrong mindfulness a good amount of uh, right view so sampajano atapi means samma uh, right effort then sampajano means right view which means knowing clearly and fully holistically in a wholesome way then satima sati means uh, right mindfulness then ma means someone who has it now this is a female uh, uh, suffix you can call somebody satima huh? buddhima buddhima means someone who has intelligence buddhima satima right ma is a female suffix in pali that means atapi sampaja satima means you have right mindfulness right these are the three supportive factors i can i will show you here see right view right effort right mindfulness see this side these three are supportive to all these eight if i make it uh, smaller you can see that see they are supportive to each right even to this one right so also the others then vinaya loke abhijja do manassa this is interesting vinaya what is vinaya have we ever found out this kind of a verb form 
ติดตั้งชารังนิสินโนวาสายาโนวายาวทัศน์วิกฤตมิดโดเอตังสัติงอดิตเตยอดิตเตยวินัยเซม What is the meaning of that stanza? Where is it mentioned? Where is that uh, verse mentioned? Given? e t a n g sating, I would say, titang charang nisin nova, saya nova ya batas sabi kita mitu. e t a n g sating adit t e y e brahma me t a n g viharang itu. Where is this mention? Ah, k a r a n i a mitu sut. Took time to calibrate, ah. Huh? <laughs> right? What does it say? Whether you stand, whether you sit, whether you lie down, as long as you are awake, as when you sleep, you can't practice meditation, right? <laughs> you can't do that. y a v a t a s a vikata m i d o m i s as long as you are awake. e t a n g sating a d i t e y a May you bring your mind. Your thoughts to this particular state of the mind, metta, brahma m e t a n g viharang. This is the highest mentality attitude. Now you tell people, ah, she has an attitude, na, he has an attitude. <laughs> This is the highest attitude, metta. Metta is the highest attitude in the dharma practice. Whatever thing you, whatever things you are doing, if you have metta, you speak with metta, you think with metta, you act with metta. You are such a very kind, beautiful being at that point, right? So, a d i t t e y a means practice. Another way of saying the future uh, sense. v i n a y a means overcome or discipline or overcome. I would say, loke loke means loke means world. Which world is that? Five continents. So. Huh? Now the Buddha asks us to uh, overcome abhijja and dhomanasa in regard to the world. This world is where is this world located? Huh? Where is our world? Huh? Our world exists within the sense faculties, right? O oh, ayatanas. Five sense faculties or twelve a y a t a n a s What are they? Rupa Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyani. It's our internal, our world. Oh, we have Chakku, Sota, Gana, Jiva, Kaya, Mana. Rupa, Sadda, Gandha, Rasa, Potta, b a d a m m a Twelve types of uh, sense bases. The Buddha said, "This is our internal world. We think the world is outside. That is the physical world. It is not the real world." I think I shared with you about that story. Ah, huh? Rohita s a Sutta, sometimes ago, right? Remember? I think I shared with you. Uh, in the Rohita Sutta, Rohita Sutta was a Deva Putta. He one day approached the Buddha and said to the Buddha, "Bante, in my last life, I was a very powerful ascetic. I can skywalk. Huh? I can skywalk. Not that you skywalk, maybe sometimes between the skyscrapers." Uh, this skywalk is pretty <laughs> uh, amazing. He said, "My one foot is in the Eastern Ocean, the other foot in the Western Ocean." So he went skywalking, looking for the end of the universe. He only stopped for eating and other things, but halfway of the journey he died. One day I want to find out the end of the world. I said, "You can't find it. Nobody can find it." This universe is such spacious. Then the Buddha said, "The true world exists in this one fathom body. This one fathom body with perception. i m a s m i n g v i v a b y a m a m a t t e kale bari sasanyam me dukkha arya satcham panya pe me dukkha samudhi arya satcham pan." The Buddha says, "Where is nibbana in this one fathom body? Don't look for nibbana outside." Very good statement. You are going to look for nibbana outside, na? in temples, monasteries, with some monks, huh? in some books. It is not anywhere. It is not even the computer. It is this perceptive, one fathom perceptive body. Find it out. If you are skilled enough, you will find it out. You will be able to find out. Then the Buddha says, 
real world is not there. You could have found this one. Now I'm going to teach you the real world is here with this one fathom body, which has, you could call it five aggregates or maybe 12 ascent spaces. You could also say 18 elements, chakku, datu, rupa, datu and all that. Whatever it, uh, it is given uh, in this context, loke means our, our world, our internal world. The Buddha says, uh, here we have to overcome abhijja and domanasa in regard to our internal world. This is the purpose of the right mindfulness. If you do anapanasati, if you do walking meditation, if you do uh, Vedana Nupasana, if you do Chitta Nupasana, if you do Dhamma Nupasana, this must be your purpose. If you are uh, deviating from this, it is not going to be right mindfulness. It is going to be wrong mindfulness. But still we haven't been able to find out what is Abhijja. What is Abhijja? See this word? Abhijja. Dobanas. Now we have to understand because Buddha asks us to overcome these two in our right mindfulness practice. If we are not able to do that, it's not going to be right mindfulness. Now, can you overcome them while sitting down? Yes, to some extent. But most of that practice comes from our daily activities. Will you have Abhijja when you are seated? Will you have uh, a grief while you are seated? Not that much. Excessive amount of abhijja, domanasa come from while you are doing other things. Then what is abhijja? Strong lobe. We call it covetousness. This is called covetousness. Right? Covetousness. What is covetousness? Covetousness means strong lobe, not, not the mere lobe, not the normal lobe, right? Now in uh, some of the suttas, they talk about another lobe, visama lobe. Now covetousness is about your, your personal things. You are very uh, greedy, so much greedy about what you have, your properties, your everything, your knowledge, whatever you have, that is covetousness. But there are some people who are more greedy about what other people have. They have no authority. They have no sense of possession. But they are greedy about what other people have. It is called visama lobe. It's another di dimension. You don't need to think about it here. Covetousness means you have strong lobe. The strong lobe has to be overcome. Second is domanasa. What is domanasa? We have two words here, Dukkha and Domanas. Uh, what are these two terms? Dukkha means? Huh? Dukkha? Here, in this context. Dukkha here means physical pain. Here means physical pain. Domanas means mental pain. This is a way to understand uh, the grief. Dukkha Domanasa. So, but when you come here, it is more about grief. What is grief? Sadness, sorrow, lamentation. What is the underlying akusala here? What could be the underlying akusala of sorrow, grief, lamentation, sadness, frustration? What is it? Huh? Hatred. Those are, because you don't like to accept what happened. Somebody passes away, you don't like to accept it. Time heals you after many, many months, many, many years, then you accept by yourself. Still you are struggling to accept that. You are thinking so good about somebody, suddenly something is going to happen with that person. Right? You are asked to accept, but you are not going to accept, because you, are, you have been building something, a good uh, sense of mind about that particular person. Maybe an idea. So here, Dobanasa means grief. Grief means you should be able to overcome your grief. That means sadness, sorrow, lamentation, all these uh, dosa-based akusala states. 
So have you done uh, right mindfulness practice this way? Huh? This is an issue. So whatever the exercise you are practicing out of the Satipattanas, there are 23, you should bring them to this framework initially. If you are not going to do that, it's going to be mindfulness. Mostly leading to wrong mindfulness. Second aspect, more importantly, where is it mentioned, this part? Now, this part is mentioned at the beginning. Atapi, Sampajano, you can see here. Katama, Chaoso, Samma, Sati, Idhaoso, Bhikkhu. Let me make it a little bigger. Yeah. Katama, Chaoso, Samma, Sati, Idhaoso, Bhikkhu, Kai, Kayanapasi, Viharati. Atapi, Sampajano, Satima, Vini, Loki, Apichatu, Manasa, Vedinasu. Uh, the phrase keeps going at the beginning of all Satipattanas. Even if you go to uh, Satipattana Sutta, let's see the Satipattana Sutta. Okay, so here we find it at, at the beginning. Then let's go to each Satipattana. Practice, you don't find it at the beginning, right? So under each Satipattana practice, at the end of Satipattana practice, you see the second aspect. This aspect is coming up over here. You can see here. Iti ajjattangva kai kai anupasive. Ajjattangva bahiddhava ajjatta bahiddhava. Samudaya dhamma anupasiva. Vaya dhamma anupasiva. Samudaya vaya dhamma anupasiva. Atti kayoti panasa sati pachu patita hoti. Yavadeva jnana mattaya patisati mattaya anisitoja viharati nacha kinchi loke upadhi. This phrase keeps coming at the at the end of all satipattana exercises. So let's see. Now this is anapanasati. You can see here. Second, we can see iriyapata for postures. Let's go down over here. Ah, iti ajjattangva kai kai See, it is given here. If you go to sampajana, full awareness part, you can again see here iti ajjattangva. If you go to nine anatomical parts, part, uh, level of uh, kayanapasana, you see it here. Iti ajjattangva kai kayanapasana. If you go to all the other practices of all satipattanas, you see this phrase. Now we're going to understand what is this. This is how you're going to practice after that. Now first, you're going to practice it. Atapi, Sampajano, Satima, Vinaya Loki, Abhichadomanas. Second, you're going to practice the same practice exercise as Ajatta Bahidda Ajatta Bahidda. What is Ajatta? Now let's take one exercise. What exercise would you like to take here? Anapana Sati. Right? You take Anapana Sati practice. One of the very highest practices uh, of Kanupasana. Then you, you are going to initially practice Anapanasati as Ajat. Ajat means looking at your body, your breaths, how you are watching your breaths. Right? So you do it by watching, watch, by taking you as a reference. Mahidda means, now this is a little complicating, huh? Conf not complicating, confusing to you, maybe. Looking at how other people breathe. What does it mean? Do I have to watch somebody, uh, you are breathing, so I'm going to think about it? No, not that way. You know how every, everybody is breathing. You have a certain uh, way of understanding how other beings are living, how other beings are uh, spending their life. And that understanding should come to your mind. Uh, other people are also breathing. Otherwise, they cannot live, they have to die. If they are that thing. Why did the Buddha say this particular part, Bahiddhava? He knew when people are going to practice only watching their parts of the body, they will sometimes, mostly probably, develop some sakkayaditi. He knew that. So he said, not only you, but also about other people. Then you know it is universal. So you can't say that it is only you are breathing and you are making it as a reference for your meditation. Very interesting. Bahidda means contemplating body externally how other people do that 
if you take it uh, the four postures how other people walk how other people stand how other people uh, sit down how other people do other things if you take sampajana how other people do certain, certain actions right so we must practice it uh, as internally which means watching over our way of doing it and watching over how other people do it bahita then not even separately as internally externally ajata bahita at a certain point you're going to see i also breathe they also breathe together make sense that is the uh, first way i call it refrain which means you have to be very careful this at this part i call the first part as definition this is how the mindfulness is given so you know the purpose of each uh, exercises and then second these are things that you have particularly have to practice along the satipatthanas second aspect here is sorry the second way of refraining or under the aspect is you should be able to see samudaya vaya samudaya vaya samudaya means now when you are practicing the breathing meditation for example what are you uh, supposed to look at initially you are watching your breaths right you are simply watching over your breaths now we have come down to watching your breaths and other people's how how they may breathe in your own way not not that you are careful about somebody ah, you are breathing now or something like that you are just referring to certain other people here at this part you are trying to see how does your breath arise what does it mean what is, what does it mean vipassana you see the arising part you see how it stays how it goes away what is it vipassana now for those people who are trying to say vipassana is a meditation this has everything satipattana sut satipa uh, samma sati has everything samma sati has jana samma sati has uh, uh, samatha vipassana everything don't call it in individual names call it samma sati which which is going by posati pattanas samudaya means now while you are taking one exercise over here you are thinking uh, i am thinking how does my breathing arise how does it stay for a moment or for a very short time how does it go away how do i see my walking uh, i am lifting my foot i'm try- i'm trying to put it down then how i'm going to keep that point of time then how how does one uh, pace of my walking happen right maybe at a certain point i'm going to stop slowly gently turn around and then walk back there is starting point there is a staying point there is a ending point and in another words we have another dhamma classification to understand this you know sankharas sankharas what is sankhara sankhara has many meanings like sati the buddha says tinimani bikkave sankatasa sankata laknani monks i say there are three character inherent characteristics in regard to sankharas sankhara mean basically what is what is made out of something else like viola sankharas i am a sankhara of my mother and father uh, so are you everything is sankhara what is not sankhara is nibbana so those sankharas huh? so we are all constructed because we are finding how to decondition we are conditioned right we are conditioned by something or somebody else nibbana is you going to decondition trying to break the conditioning process so he says sankharas like what we call by us or constructed ones they have three inherent characteristics uppado panyayati i see a certain beginning vayo panyayati i see a certain ending of everything then titassa anya tattam panyayati i see a certain transformation transitioning from the starting point beginning point to the end point right same thing breathing starts breathing ends between the starting and ending there is a certain time our, like our life like everything now you are going to use this aspect into your whatever the satipatthana exercise 
be that breathing be that walking postures be that sampajanas be that uh, nine types of uh, other things be that elementary meditation be that uh, vedana anupasana be that chitta anupasana be that dhamma anupasana you are going to incorporate this vipassana attitude into each exercise now it's very interesting now let's say uh, under the dhamma anupasana it says uh, uh, okay i have to see whether i have kama chand then i understand yes i had kama chand but now that kama chand is not anymore with me why is it i understand through the samudaya part vaya part va- samudaya vaya part i bring this uh, aspect into my each exercise then attiko attikhayoti va panas attikhayoti va panas sati pachu pattita hoti yava deva jnana mattay patissati mattay now this is about how we have to intensify our right mindfulness because right mindfulness is always swaying here and there so we have to sort of keep it keep it all the time right it is it is kind of, kind of a negotiator in a hostage situation if you are a negotiator in a hostage situation somebody is trying to kill somebody else and you have to do you have to play a role over there if you get late you know something can happen to that person and something can happen to you so that means mindfulness right mindfulness has to be carefully and then uh, you know uh, uh, thoughtfully use at all times let's see now here kaya anupasana now under this we take kaya anupasana you can take dhamma anupasana you can take chitta anupasana go with the anupasana atti kaya uti va panasati pachupat right mindfulness according to right mindfulness that there is a body kaya is established in me or somebody now you understand you have a body at the same time you understand right mindfulness is now established or i would say it is near you to the extent necessary for the bare knowledge and continuous mindfulness now here jnana mattai means for the bare knowledge at the same time patissati mattai means continuous mindfulness what does it mean bare knowledge now in order for us to keep our right mindfulness in regard to this particular exercise uh, breathing we have to always create a sort of mental point mental situation that i have the bare knowledge of uh, what you call right mindfulness uh, it is not still uh, consistent with something at the same time i need to understand i have to continuously keep it keep it up right now the last one says to us what is the consistency of our right mindfulness anisito cha viharati i dwell independently right when you are trying to practice right mindfulness in this way you become independent right and nacha kinchi loke upadiyat you are not clinging to anything in this internal world because clinging is the problem so these are the two aspects you have to incorporate when you practice any satipatthanas you can read it uh, after go home here i have given 23 satipatthan practices kaya anupasana has 14 anapana iriyapata sampajana patikula manasikara datu manasikara navasivatika vedana has three sukha dukkha adukkha masukha it has been uh, separated by samisa niramisa wordly unwordly wordly happiness unwordly happiness wordly dukkha unwordly dukkha that means uh, if monastics are going through uh, dukkha we could say unwordly uh, right not un- i would say uh, yeah unwordly dukkha right chitta anupasana has 16 thoughts right these are actually thoughts that can come to us lust raga dosa moha all these thoughts i'm not going to explain all that because of the time and finally dhamma anupasana has only five aspects they are relevant to nivarana kanda ayatana bhujjanga four hari sacha how do we understand this part let's say now if you take if you want to practice dhamma anupasana this is the uh, uh, simple way 
you take one of the hindrances, let's say sensual desire, uh, sensual desire arisen in me, then Ovyapada arisen in me, then uh, Tinamidda arisen in me, right? So, because that these hindrances have arisen in you, you are trying to work toward the uh, removal or withdrawal of those uh, Panchanivaranas by using the Atapi Sampajano Satimavine Lukia Pichatavana Sang aspect and then the other one, Ajata Bahidya and all that practices. Finally, before I am leaving you for a given eh? Four Satipatthanas cannot be practiced without the path support you component. You know what they are. Samaditi, Samavayama, Sama Sati again. Progression of four Satipatthanas in one's practice. How Now somebody might ask, how do I uh, progress in my Satipatthana practice? I think I told many weeks ago, the main practice of Satipatthana is breathing. Why is it? Breathing is the most important practice of Satipatthana. It doesn't mean that you're going to practice it uh, all the time. You may do it time to time. But breathing is the, the easiest way to understand your emotional structures. The more you refine your breaths, the calmer you are. You can find out where are the issues. Where are my issues with my emotional structures? Let's say, how does my anger arise? How does my irritation arise? How does my nagging arise? How does my other, other small, small things arise? So you particularly understand. Then the other uh, exercises are support you. They are support you. They cannot be practiced without breathing meditation to some extent. Because you are not able to understand your emotional structures very well with them initially. But when you have a good level of breathing meditation, you are able to easily find out uh, those issues with other exercises. Progression. See? Uh, although Anapana Sati is at the bottom, but you go up, high up, when you practice... Ah, do we have to practice all these Satipatthanas for, for practicing right mindfulness? Do we have to practice all these things? Do we have to practice Kaya, Vedana, Chidamma 4 together? How do we practice it? We start with Kaya Nupasana, but must we practice all these Satipatthanas? Not necessarily. It depends. Some people like practicing Vedana Nupasana, but they have to start with Anapanasati. There are many uh, examples where some people became even Arahan only by practicing one short Satipatthana. Right? don't have to worry about it. But what you have to worry about, whether you are doing even one satipattana, one exercise in the proper way, incorporating uh, these two, definition and refrain part. That is the most important thing. Then finally, interconnectedness of the four satipattanas. Once again, I am going to say that breathing is the central part of satipattana practice. Uh, see this one. You see the breaths, the breath, and then you see postures. This is called, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, iriyapathas. Then activities mean, uh, what do you call, sampajanya, body parts, anatomical parts, elements, dhatu, manasikara, uh, and then dead body, anatomical parts, feeling means uh, vedranapasana, here mind I would say thoughts, chitranapasana, then the rest of the five are dhammanapasana. But middle is breath. If you are practicing breath meditation very well, you are doing very well with all the other satipattanas. Uh, the reference to this idea is Anapana Satisutta, Majamanikaya. Let's go there. I think we did that in our retreat. Remember, in our retreat we did that. Let me type that for you again. In this Anapana Satisutta, Majamanikaya uh, 118, Buddha says, if you want to practice Four satipattanas in one exercise is that is what you call by none other than anapanasati. If you practice anapanasati very well, you can practice all the satipattanas in one stretch. But some people prefer to do a little bit of anapanasati and then pick one other small satipattana exercise. So it depends on your interest at your discretion. All right, so today what we learn is what is sati. What is Samasati? 
Yes, we understood. Mindfulness is very different from right mindfulness. Right mindfulness is hardly anywhere. The purpose of right mindfulness is very important. That is to become ardent or diligent, then uh, clearly knowing, atapi sampajano, then satima. Satima means truly mindful, or rightly mindful just to the extent necessary for overcoming, most importantly, abhichya dhomanasa. That means, covetousness, strong lobe, strong greed, and then grief. If this is not going to be done in any, whatever so-called mindfulness or satipatthana practices, then there you are not practicing what the Buddha truly asks in the suttas. All right, any questions? You must have a lot of questions. <laughs> Interesting topic. <laughs> Avante, uh, could you tell me the way of the practice, uh, internal and external, ah. more, more detail? Can okay. I? Let's take uh, breath meditation. Now we have to practice it under the second aspect also. First aspect, second aspect. This one, see? First aspect, second aspect. Yeah. Let's take breath meditation. Now you initially, I think this is what most people are doing. Uh, my, I'm having a long breath, so I, I watch my long breath, right? This is normal, everybody knows that. So, after a certain uh, moments of that practice, that certain way of watching over your own breaths, you need to shift your focus for a moment to understand that other people are also breathing and they may also be encountering long breaths. Yeah, you are not going to check that. Check. Don't check. <laughs> because common, it's common sense. It's common sense that everybody breathes. So you are going to bring that common sense into your that practice. You are not going to check around. It is just uh, reminding you that this is happening. Yeah. Internally means on, on your side, externally means what other people do, the same thing. If you take another example, let's say, uh, you know, I would say, being silent, tunhi bhave, tunhi bhave, it is under the sampajana, full awareness. Let's say now you are silent, right? You are silent. Uh, you are not silent for a problem. Huh? <laughs> you are silent just because you want to be silent. Then, okay, you understand, I am silent now, I don't want to talk. At the same time, I think about other people also can be silent like me. They have their own way of being silent. Then you understand, other people also can experience this state of mind, the state of emotion. Just to give you a reference about what other people do in general, not uh, XYZ people, generally other people also practice it. That is what we call by externally, internally, externally, and then both internally, externally. At, at a certain, after that, first you, then others, then you and others. Then you are thinking about vipassana attitude. Now, how does tunhi uh, bhava, silence thing arise? How does it stay? Exercise. Concept? Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of concept. Guideline, actually. It's a guideline. How to do it. Mm. Uh, you are not particularly watching over other people, certain thing. Mm. You don't have to. Uh, the idea, let me tell you the idea. The purpose of this referring to other people is that to avoid creating certain sakkayadit in your practice. Mm. Now you understand why the Buddha said that. Because when you are doing everything alone, Finally, when you do the good things, you're coming up with a good Sakkaya Ditti. <laughs> Let's say you are a person who is offering dana all the time, all alone, all alone, all alone. Many hundred, not hundred, huh? many, <laughs> many years. Then you may have come up, oh, I'm giving so much dana. You don't know where to, st where to stop that mentality. I mean, generosity is good, but when you are looking at what you've been doing, you should have a upekha. Who is bringing you upekka? Nobody is giving you upekka. Uh, Sangha will never say, hey, stop your dana. You keep going, you keep going, you keep going, it's good. But 
then uh, but when you are watching or what other people are doing too when you have a kalyanamitas you may have certain self parameters moral parameters at that point you kind of balancing out your practice that way you understand that uh, i got to be careful you know i got to be in the middle i got to be in the upekka so uh, that is why buddha talks about this uh, external thing i think you have to think that way rather than thinking it's an ideology or a concept or a guideline buddha won't, uh, wanted us to uh, stop developing any self centered thoughts in our meditation that is why he said bahita no no not many people talk about it actually of course not i don't think you know this this way before bahita means externally which means we have to bring our particular satipatta and exercise to how other people do that particular practice uh, not just to evaluate what they are doing don't evaluate just reminding you they are also doing it so universalizing see, universalizing that practice into you so then you are not developing any self centered uh, you know sakkaya ditta practice because sakkaya ditta is the one that we have to overcome in the first place yes brother would you mind st- uh, standing so other people can see you very well okay <laughs> uh, one day so the there's another saying saying that the buddhist meditation is to reduce the panchan nirvana so the rest are the hindu or what so ever the nimitta or kasina what so ever there's uh, nothing to do with the buddhist meditation so uh, is that the correct one the saying like buddhist this? meditation is about what pancha reducing the pancha nirvana uh-huh. yeah i don't think so i mean i'm talking from the text none of the text talk about that now what do you refer to the buddhist meditation when you say buddhist meditation what do you refer to what meditations do you what are the references are you referring to here and that's uh, i just listen just to just a thought right yeah, it's a popular thought. idea yes. right yes yes no. because i uh, <laughs> should never go by these popular ideas we have to check what is given we have only samma sati samatha vipassana they are later adaptations uh, by different people uh, you may find samatha vipassana certain and in certain suttas but our bigger practice is four satipatthanas and this is the way uh, panchanivaranas are the minimalist approach to uh, hindu meditation okay yeah it's a minimalist approach even every hindu practices it in himalayas they want to uh, withdraw them them from the panchanivan so that they can get psychic powers they can read your mind and then they again expire from that uh, skill then again they practice it again they come back uh, it's a, it's a, that kind of a practice so when you say buddhist meditation you must highlight that buddhist meditation refers to four satipatthanas and this particular uh, practice which is an integrated combined practice with other uh, noble eight pole path practice factors yeah but but the most reason or like the the reason for the past of 50 years uh, somebody like developed the the so called the modern vipassana or something like that that's where the pante punaji psd is saying that but that one even further derail from the this uh, panchan nirvana even far away from the the even the panchan nirvana am i right because not even to the this uh, hindu so called the basic or minimalist that kind of like the criteria what are those monks saying they uh, have they say they say like the kasina meditation yes. or the nimitta meditation those are like the is maybe like newly invented that kind of yeah yeah it's true yes. it's true no argument about it i think kasina is mentioned only in the visuddhi mark it's a later book So that's why I encourage you to read from the suttas not from Visuddhi Magga. Visuddhi Magga is a very late book uh, in the 5th uh, century uh, uh, BC by uh, South Indian monk uh, we call him Tamil actually South Indian uh, Buddha Gosha. So uh, he wrote it there you see he introduced 40 40 points of objects kammatthanas. We don't find kammatthanas in the suttas. Uh, they they made it a very sophisticated practice uh, asking people to watch the colors and all that 
it's not it's not what we talk about uh, you know this uh, buddhist teachings have been periodically uh, exposed to different people political cultures even uh, different sangha cultures uh, so we have to understand without blaming anybody we just have to understand it so uh, this is the true original teachings of the buddha uh, when you say buddhist meditation is only for satipatthanas and their methods of how uh, you are to practice uh, whatever the satipatthana exercise Yes, yes, because they are naming themselves like the Kasina or like the yeah, yeah. Nimita. So basically, it's they straight, come from Vishuddhi Monk. Yeah, strictly speaking, maybe they are not even the Buddhist because they, they are not practicing according. No, no, no. Uh, they are Buddhist, but you know, I, as I told you, as uh, Buddhist history uh, has been, uh, you know, growing after the Buddha's passing away, numerous monks have added different things. Uh, so we, uh, Suicidu Mark is one of them. Uh, yeah. So we have to understand that maybe they may have done it to protect Buddh Buddhism at that time. But it's not longer valid now for us. Let's appreciate, but not the true thing. Yeah, that is what we have to understand. Okay, thank you. And the Vipassana movement was uh, re-found by the, I would say not re-found, found by the Burmese uh, Sayados as a response to the colonialism. Because uh, Burma has been experiencing colonialism uh, at a certain point. They wanted to show that your enlightenment movement has some uh, defects. And we have this thing, they, they uh, stripped, stripped out some of the aspects of Anicca Dukkha. And Atta said, ah, this is Vipassana meditation. Right? But we don't have this particular Vipassana. We have, Vipassana is a part of this Satipatthanas. Samadhi is a part of it. Our meditation is for Satipatthanas. Once again, I reiterate. Question? Turn off. Uh, good evening, Bhante's uh, brothers and sisters. Okay, uh, I would like to talk to you about mindfulness. Uh, it's a mental state of uh, focusing uh, one awareness at the present moment while calmly acknowledging the sensation, the thoughts, and the body's uh, response, you see. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you come to mindfulness uh, in a state of uh, going to meditation, right, on one hand, you observe your breathing, and then the other hand, the thoughts must keep on coming, it's distracting, distracting, it's like a, a positive, a negative kind of a, a, things is challenging each other, is losing focus in, in the process, you see. Mm -hmm. So how would we uh, basically go to a state where we are really focused on the stillness? Thank you. If you want the stillness, you don't have to go that much, that far. If you practice some other meditation, you will be calm. Right? I would say uh, simple, uh, what do you call, uh, anapanasati. You know, when you start with Anapanasati, your mind will be calm. Actually, you have to understand how do we get to the stillness and clarity with this practice. So, um, you are trying to uh, practice breathing. In this breathing practice, you will get to know your emotions. When you know your emotions better than before, then stillness automatically arises. Once, once that stillness arises, then you will see things differently than you used to see. Clarity is the second. So I think it is a part of the Anapanasati, one of the Satipattana's practices. If it's a positive thoughts, right, it will reinforce uh, your, your state of thickness. Well, what about these negative thoughts keep coming, 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 it, it becomes the distractions, you know, in, in the process. Because you haven't practiced Sammavaya <laughs> more. In Sammavayamo, because that is why before coming here, what I said, practice Sammavayamo. Prevent inactive akusalas. That means you haven't had them now already, but they might come at a certain time. So you're going to prevent them coming. Prevention is better than uh, cure, right? <laughs> and then remove the existing active akusala states. That is what we have to do before meditation, satipatthanas. That's a prior practice. Pre Requisite for this uh, mindfulness. 
So uh, without doing as such, you simply sit down and thinking, I'm going to do a very different thing today. <laughs> it is not going to work. <laughs> That's why I said it's a combined integrated practice. Step by step. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. How many of you uh, practice meditation every day? A good question, right? Short, short. Huh? Short, yeah, short meditation. <laughs> yeah, short one, it's good. Nowadays, everything needs to be short. If you want to watch a video, it should be short. Uh, yeah, something to eat is grab and eat, right? Everything has to be short. <laughs> but it's not the timing, it's the quality that you invest in that moment. That's the satipattanas. Well, how do you bring the quality? True definition and to refrain. So read, read a couple times of these two and then you will know because you already know Vedana Anupasana, Jitta Anupasana, Dhamma, everybody talks about it. Then you will know how to do them properly, in the proper way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry Bhante. Yeah. The, there's another saying, saying that the Bhavana and the meditation is totally different, that kind of like the meaning. Bhavana can be like you're doing anything uh, mindful, that can be considered as a so-called practicing. But the meditation is uh, like the Christian context that you need to see it, you need to be something uh, different from the this uh, daily activity, then only you are practicing. Is that correct? If so, all the words that we use now in English, they are Christian. They are all are Christian words. English is not even a language. It is also a culture. English language uh, comes from an English culture. Let me tell you. Now, we don't call bhavana, normally bhavana to satipattana. Bhavana is a verb actually. Uh, now, in, uh, in Pali, especially in the modern Pali usage, uh, Sri Lankan monks, they used to say bhavana is meditation. But Buddha does not use that word here, satipattana sutta. Bhavana means developing. Actually, Bhavana is developing seven Bojangas. I think I talked about it. Where did I talk about? In the retreat. Under the Sabbasava Sutta. Remember? Under the Sabbasava Sutta, I discuss about it. You can see here, there are seven ways to overcome Akusala states here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh? Developing. See? Seven Bojangas. Now, uh, it, is, it is a particular verb to develop the seven bojangas. You can't universalize this to the whole bhavana practice. But it is a word to develop. Uh, now in our satipattana practice, we not only develop, we do other things too. Right? Do we, do, do we, if you see the action, certain actions that we do under Satipattanas, developing is only one part. What are the other things we are doing in Satipattanas? Developing, then understanding, then clearly knowing. Sometimes we are emptying out, right? We are emptying, the word mindfulness is also not a good term for Satipattana because filling the mind is mindfulness. What about the times that we are emptying the mind? Sometimes we empty the mind. We kind of, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, program our mind, right? So uh, it is a word, but you cannot refer to the Satipattanas as a whole. But certainly it has certain actions. Uh, in Sri Lanka they say Bhavana. Samatha Bhavana, Vipassana Bhavana. It's a uh, use that was made by senior Sangha, probably the Mahavihara traditions. But we don't find it here in any of the Satipattanas. You don't find it in the, what you call, Dhammachaka Sutta, Satchavibhanga, Mahachattari Saka Sutta, two Satipattanas. They never use it. They only say, this is what they say. Let's go back. Katama chavusu samma sati davusu bhikkhu kai kayan passe viharati atapi sampajano satima vinaya loke abhijjadu manasa. That means it is a practice of certain, certain actions. You could say it's a developing, but it has other things to emptying out, uh, clearly knowing, uh, right? So there are 
many other activities attached to this satipatthana practice. So I would rather say placing right mindfulness near or with your other activities. Could be a, you can't sort of, uh, you know, uh, cherry pick only one Pali word. It was a constructed Pali word. In Pali you see bhavana, but you don't see it here. Uh, and in some suttas, Buddha says metta bhaveta, practice metta. But he does not say bhaveta or uh, maybe bhavana to satipatthanas. Yeah, makes sense? It was, it is not wrong, but it was not given in the text. <laughs> the word is good, but it only says one part of the sammasati. It's not inclusive there. Right? All right, any other questions? If not, we're going to transfer the good karmas. Looks like no. Uh, for next uh, Monday, we will be discussing uh, Samma Samadhi, the last noble path factor. After that, we have the review, and then we are continuing after that. May all the good karmas that we've been accumulating today, uh, especially by discussing, engaging in a very fruitful discussion about what is Samma Sati and how it, how it is different from sati or mindfulness uh, be transferred to all the departed ones may all the good karmas we be in accumulating be transferred to all these departed ones may they be well and happy if they were reborn in a place of pain discomfort may they be able to release from those painful realms if they are reborn in a place of comfort happiness may they be able to improve uh, those lives and practice more dhamma and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita huntu nyatayu idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita huntu nyatayu <coughs> May Deva Naga Mahidika be well and happy. May they share all these good karmas. May they bless all of you for good health, quality of life, prosperity, safety, especially for your Dhamma journey. May Deva Naga Mahidika finally attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Aka satta chibhummatta deva naga punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhang tuluk sasanang akha satta chibhum matta mahiddika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhang tudesanang akha satta deva naga mahiddika punyantang anumod chirang rakhang tumang paranti chirang rakhang tutvang sadati Ittavata cha ammihi sambhatang punya sampadang sambhi deva Sambha sampatti siddhiya ittavata cha ammihi sambhatang punya Sambhi bhuta anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhiya ittavata cha Sambhatang punya sampadang sambhi satta Sabha Sang Patti Sindhya. May we be in the company of the noble friends and not with the Papa Mithas till we attain the Nibbana. Thinking thus, may we are going to make a wish. Imina Punya Kamine Mami Bala Samagamu Satang Samagamu Yava Nibbana Pattiya. One of the reasons why we transfer good karmas to departed ones and share good karmas to Deva Naga Mahidika also is to minimize any self-centeredness about the punya karmas, good karmas we are doing. So kind of um, diminishing all these aspects. Finally, may all the good karmas which we be in accumulating today be uh, supportive and helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pacha ino chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayu annu sukhang balang ayura rugya sampatti sagra sampatti me vacha Atu Nibbana Sampati Iminati Samidinshatu Sadhu 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 And the Sutta study for today is over and I'm wishing you a good night and till you see uh, next Monday. Take care.